Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a, uh, a new type of indicator that we're going to be covering here, and that is uh, essentially combining multiple indicators, which we've already done. Uh, but in this particular indicator, what we're going to do is we're going to create a scoring method, and the indicator is going to use points based on the different indicators we're using to help us determine uh, when a good time to buy might be, or uh, just how confident the signal to buy might be. Uh, so to get started, the first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to make a new script. So click on the Pine Editor if you don't see it on your chart. It's down here at the bottom. Pull it up. Go to New, Blank Indicator Script. We're going to start out with an indicator. Now uh, this is uh, what you're going to start with here. There's really not much to it. We're just naming the indicator, the study. If you've seen the other videos, you'll know what the study means and you'll know what plot does as well, but plot pretty obviously just plots uh, whatever you want on the chart. So in this case, if we were to save this indicator and add it to the chart, it would plot the close, uh, which is the current price uh, or the end price of each candle. Now let's go ahead and name this scoring development. Now I'm going to kind of do some live coding today. Uh, for this video in particular, mostly because I had a, a very complex scoring uh, script or indicator that I made, and I realized I need to break it up into smaller segments, so this video is actually going to end up being about three videos worth, because there's a few other concepts that we're going to cover that need to be covered in their own video, and we're going to build from this particular uh, indicator that we're starting with today, which is a very simple example of how the scoring is going to work. And then we're going to move into one that's a little bit more complex and uh, go over some other parts of PineScript that's going to help you uh, with other things and hopefully do some things you haven't really thought of before. So let's go ahead and s save this as scoring development. Excellent. Let's name it. Well, actually, let me copy some code over here from my other screen. Just a moment. We'll just rename this, copy that. So what we're going to be doing in this particular indicator is we are definitely not going to be plotting the close price. I'm going to go ahead and erase that because we don't need that, at least not yet. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a look at three different ways to judge what's going on on the chart. So we're going to look at the price. Uh, we're going to see if the candle is green or not, because usually if you're looking for a bounce, then you want a green candle. Uh, like I said, this, this may or may not be a good strategy. We're just getting started here. I just want to show you. So let's pretend that if it's a green candle, it's worth, uh, let's see, five points or something like that. And if we have uh, the 50 period SMA, which I have on the chart, if it's moving upward, then we'll give it a few points uh, because we're in an upward trend. Now, the other one that we're going to be doing is the RSI. And what we're going to be taking a look at is we want to give more points for RSI the lower it is. Now, one of the things we're going to cover in the future videos is how do we handle times like this where you can see on the chart where the RSI bottomed out here, but the price continued to drop even though the RSI went up. Now, you might look at that and call it a divergence, but what you really want to do is you want to quantify that somehow uh, in your scoring. And I think I found a way to kind of help with that. It doesn't necessarily identify it exactly, but the, the scoring method that I've come up with uh, that I'm going to show you in the last part of the videos for scoring will kind of help you account for the price continuing to go down even though RSI bottomed out a few candles ago. But for now, we're just going to focus on trying to capture a low RSI as a more valuable point. Uh, and in that case means it's going to be worth more points on our indicator. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to build an indicator kind of like our RSI model here, except it's not going to bounce between 0 and 100 like RSI. It's going to be on its own uh, chart here. That's why the overlay is set to false and it is going to range from zero to whatever number of points it adds up to. So it could add up to 10 points. It could add up to a million points. Uh, it just keeping things relative in scale. All right. 
So now that I've explained everything and hopefully you're still watching the video, I know I normally show you an example. Uh, that's why I said these videos are going to be a bit different. So let's go ahead and start by calculating our RSI and we'll name this RSI, set the RSI set to the close value for a 14 period, that's default. Now I'm not putting in the inputs right now like we have in the past. And that's basically just because uh, this is the first one. And it doesn't really matter if it's hard coded, we're just doing this for an example. Now, the other thing we want to do is we wanted to check for if it was a green candle or not. So uh, we'll name this one is green. And I actually need to go back and change these. And we're gonna use a condition which is uh, the parentheses. If you compare two values within the parentheses, it's condition, it's gonna return true or false. So we're gonna set is green to true or false by comparing the close, making sure it is greater than the open. So let me go back, I wanna rename these. I hate working with lowercase, it's just something I've gotten used to. I typically capitalize all acronyms and use camel case with my uh, other variables. So after we get that, we also wanted to look at our SMA 50 period. Uh, let me make sure these comments match. All right, we'll call this SMA, and then we will call the SMA built-in function with the close with the 50 period. So now we have our values, and let's actually go ahead and plot these, plot the RSI. Uh, we're not going to plot is green, and we'll also plot the SMA. Uh, the reason I'm going to plot is green is because it's a true or false. Uh, it might show a 1 or a 0, but uh, I haven't even tried plotting a, a uh, Boolean value on here before. So we'll just save this. Oh, yeah. I need to capitalize those. My apologies. That's part of the fun of doing this kind of live coding. Even though this is a recorded video, I am not going to go back and edit this stuff out. That's too much work. <laughs> All right, that's been saved. Let's add it to the chart. Okay, so you can see our SMA up here. Uh, that's following along with this value. Of course, it's not on that chart because we set the overlay equal to false. Now the RSI is down here and you can see it's well, it's this number, and let's go to the last candle here. It's 46.06, and on the smoothed RSI right here, you'll notice it's also 46.06. So it's the same calculation that we're using there. Now that we know that, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that RSI. We're going to quit plotting the simple moving average uh, just because it throws things way out of scale. And now we can see the RSI. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start coming up with our points. Now, the first thing we're going to score is going to be if the candle is green. So uh, let's call this one is green points. And let's set that equal to, uh, we got to do a condition here, is green. So if it is a green candle, then we are going to give it, let's see how many points did we say, uh, I think I said five, let's just do three. And if it's not green, then we're not gonna give it any points. That's fair enough. So if you haven't seen my videos before, this is checking this condition, and if it's true, it returns this value. If it's false, it returns this one. We're setting that value here. Okay, go on to the next one. First, let me go ahead and add some notes here. Green points. We'll do the SMA points now. And we're gonna have a condition here to check whether the current SMA is greater than the previous SMA. And I've covered this uh, in the past in one of the most recent videos, and that is we are working with an array. The simple moving average is a series of data. You can see it on the chart here. Um, in order to access the previous values back here, when we're looking at the, um, the calculated values, we have to supply it uh, an index number to go backwards. So the current candle is uh, always index base zero. That's the way arrays work. So if we wanna go back one candle, we have to say we're going to use the SMA1 in the array. That's the first one back. 
So that's how we get the value of the previous one. So to know if the SMA is moving upwards, we have to check if the current SMA was above the previous SMA one period back. It's pretty simple. So once we check that condition, if it is true, we'll give it another three points. If it is false, we'll give it zero. So now we have points for our green candle. We have points for a upward moving trend. Now the interesting part uh, is really capturing the value of the RSI. So we don't really care about giving points to the RSI if it's above a certain level. I mean, obviously, if it's up this high, uh, then it's already up to a high amount. We probably don't want to buy there with our uh, indicator. We don't want to give these points to signal a buy. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a limit that we're going to go under. Now we're going to start with, I believe it was 35 I used in my testing. Let me double check that. Yes. So we're going to look at only candles that have RSI under 35. And uh, how do we do that? So it's actually really simple how we calculate these points. And what I'm going to do, uh, typed on the wrong page. Uh, what we're going to do is we are actually going to give one point for every uh, value the RSI is below 35. So for example, if we're looking here and the value is 23, if it rounded it to 23, if it rounded down to 23, that would be worth 12 points because it is 12 below 35. Likewise, if this rounded down to 20, it would be worth 15 points here because it is down at a 20, 15 below 35. Let's go ahead and type that in. Now we're going to check. We have to have the RSI below 35. At 35, it should be worth zero. And we need to have, no wait. I think that's all we need for right now. <laughs> Excuse me. I was getting a little bit confused with my code. So if it is below 35, then the value we want to return is 35 minus the RSI. So if the RSI, like I said, was 20, rounded down on this particular candle that we're looking at, 35 minus that 20 would leave us with 15 points. So that means the lower the RSI is, the more points we're giving to our particular uh, indicator here to show us when to buy. You know, it's not going to be ideal when we plot everything out, and you'll see that, but uh, I hope by now you're kind of getting the idea of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to uh, give us some confidence values on the indicators that we're looking at and plot that on the chart so that we can see when we're most confident uh, on making a decision on what to do. So if it is not below 35, it obviously needs to return zero. So now we have all of our points. What do we need to do with our points? Well, quite frankly, we just need to total the points up so we would go to make a new variable total points set it equal to is green points plus sma points plus our rsi points now we have our total number of points let's also uh, plot our points fix this comment all right so we have RSI. I'm actually going to leave that on there for now. Uh, let's plot our total points and set the color equal to color dot uh, yellow because we have a blue RSI already. Save that. Uh, you can see it applied the changes to the chart. Now, what you're looking at on the yellow line is our total points for each particular candle based on the settings that we gave it. Now we'll go ahead and look in depth at one in just a moment just to make sure the calculations add up. But you can see with the RSI, once it got really low here, below 35, there was kind of a mirror effect on the uh, point system because as RSI went below 35, it popped up in reflection to the moves that were happening there. So let's go ahead and take the RSI off because that might be a bit confusing and it kind of, kind of changes the scale that we're working with. Now we can see something that looks a lot more uh, like the actual point system. 
Uh, it's not really flat looking like it was in the previous picture. But you can see there are high points. So when the price dipped low here, you got more points than before. And let's actually take a look at this particular one. We do not have a green candle, so we should get zero points for that. It's below the 50 period. All right. So it has zero points. And it has 14.71 points. That means the RSI was 14.71 points below 35. So what's that? 20.29. Let me add the RSI indicator back on here. Uh, actually, let me add mine back on here. The smooth RSI. Takes a second to load. And let's see, it was this one, and the value was 20.29. So that's exactly uh, what we would have expected based on our point systems. You can see now, uh, the entire concept of this is you can apply points in a weighted value based on where the indicators you're wanting to use are. And in order to do that, you can combine multiple indicators. Now we just used really the RSI and the SMA here. The SMA was just a trend, but the RSI we actually used to uh, indeed weight it. So in the next video, uh, I'm going to add another indicator on it. And let's see, we're going to, yes, we are going to add another indicator on it. And I think that is about it because we're going to cover an indicator that we haven't done. So we're going to add one more indicator in here. And then we are going to take a look at a, a different condition that we can use to add more points. So, for example, with the RSI, we covered, you know, if it's in a positive trend. But there's different things you can do with a simple moving average other than just look at whether it's going up or down. I'll take a look at something like that. And then in the last video, uh, I believe there's just going to be three videos for the scoring development. And in the last video, we're going to take a look at loops in PineScript. And we're actually going to try and find those periods where there could be that divergence with the RSI and to help score our system a little bit better. Now, it's not going to be perfect. I don't think anything is going to be perfect. But uh, we're going to be able to apply more points further in as the price goes down and I'll show you exactly how we do that in those videos but uh, I appreciate you watching uh, the source code for this is going to be posted on my trading view profile on the scripts you can see that uh, my profile is set to the username bigbits.io there's a link to it in the description we are going to be posting that script here eventually I want to finish it complete it I want to get the inputs down really nicely so you have a lot of great options you can actually uh, come up with your own settings for it and find the most optimal one for you but for now I think that does it for the video if you like the video please leave a like uh, if you like these types of videos please subscribe that really helps me a lot and uh, of course have a nice day thank you you.